Got a thrill out of it. Almost followed my bridge work. <laughs> hey, you certainly did scare me, young fella. I'm used to having a gun pulled on. <laughs> How are you doing, boss? Oh, that's perfect, son. Keep up the good work, and I'll speak to Tom Meeks. He put you with a circus. Hey. Can we have that ride now, Bob? Sure, why not? Wait a minute, Bob, before you make any engagement. Oh, don't tell me I have to make another trip. I wouldn't ask you to do this if the people weren't important. Oh. It's around the world tourists from England. Wire just came. They'll be here on the 440. Did you hear that, Persimmons? I heard it. Well, you're certainly making our last day a tough one. We wanted to get away early. Oh, come on, Bob. You're not going to quit? Now, Mr. Nolan, when Persimmon and I took this job, we told you it would only be temporary. Well, might jack up the wages a little. Mm -mm. No inducement. Look. All we wanted was a little money to work that mine of ours. I ain't anxious to pull out. All I ever got out of that mine was lumbago. <laughs> of course, we don't know how good it is yet. But if you have a mine, you can't blame us for wanting to work it. Sorry to disappoint you, girls. Our ride's off. I'll get one of the other boys to take you. Mike! We get to have our money ready when we get back, Mr. Nolan. This is our last trip. Come on, Persimmon. Traveling again. You don't call this traveling. Hey, I'll show you some real traveling if that old hole in the ground's as good as Ben says it is. Well, Ben ought to know. He's been around long enough. Wish we didn't have to make this trip again. I bet old Ben's been packed and waiting for hours. <laughs> Where did I get my hands on that gold? Then I'm off for foreign parts, uh. as they say in those trip folders. <laughs> I'm going to see the canals of Venice, the Leaving Tower of Pisa. And I'm going to the Louvre and see Mona Lizzi. Yeah, you better see that you know that welcome speech of yours. Whoa! Say, I can say that just like a guide in the Louvre. Let's have it. Welcome to the West. El Reposo greets you. Nestling at the foot of the snow-clad peaks like an incandescent jewel. A what? An incandescent jewel. Iridescent, dearie. Iridescent. Iridescent, incandescent, what's the difference? I can say it any way I want. If we hit that gold, see that, hopes. Hello, Ben. Oh, Jay, what a 
What you doing back here on that case, though? Oh, I got to put the act on again, but this is the last time. Ah, uh, that's what you said last trip. You ain't gonna get rich on no dude ranch. And we ain't gonna get fat working that claim unless we got beans. <laughs> well, I couldn't let the boss down. Nolan knows we're through after this, then. I'll tell you what to do. You start now as long as you're all packed and we'll follow. This ain't just another stall. Certainly not. We'll be right on your heels. And if the mine clicks, you're in for 10%. Don't forget that. It'll click. I got a lot of confidence in that claim. I haven't made many mistakes. I'll see you up there. And no more stalling. Bring up a deck of cards. All right. You ready, Jake? Sure. <laughs> Here she comes. Have you got your mustache? Sure. Got your speech? Sure. I can say it backwards. Mm-hmm. That's been the trouble. Come on. Get out. That's the man from El Raposo. Welcome to the West. Well, I'm you... Mrs. Henrietta Barclay. How do you do? I'm Persimmon. You're what? Persimmon. Oh, pardon me. I thought you said Persimmon. I did. That's my name. Oh. Welcome to the West. El Reposo. Oh, come, my man. What about the luggage? That will be taken care of, mister. Right this way. Welcome to the West. El Reposo greets you. Nestle at the foot of the snow-clad peak. We're supposed to ride in that. Rather primitive, but intriguing. I like the idea, Hadley. El Reposo is nothing if not Western. The spirit of the West still lives. The automobile will never replace the horse. You've been drinking. <laughs> no, ma'am, that's just the kind of a welcome speech I'm supposed to make. Oh, I see. But carry on. Huh? Get on with it. Oh. Welcome to the West. El Reposo greets you. Thank you. It's very pretty. Drive carefully, coachman. Coachman. Well, I think it's an imposition to make us ride in a thing like this. Just an example of the provincialism that bores me to death. Makes me ashamed that I'm an American. Now you understand why I've been living in London for the last couple of years. Keep from riding in stagecoaches. I'm enjoying it. That settles it, Hadley. The Pamela's made up her mind to enjoy it. Nothing on earth can change her. That's a libel on my character, Aunt Henry. I'm one of the most docile of humans. Aren't I, Hadley? You're one of the most charming. You should make a model husband, Hadley. That's what I keep telling Pamela. But not very successfully so far. Well, there they are. Get 
Don't you get personal with me, young man. Hey, Jake, keep an eye on these people. Come on, you two. You! Come on, girlie, you ain't painted in there. Now, come on, get out with the others. I'll not move. Now, I mean business. If you don't come out of here, I'll pull you out. You just try it. I'll get to you later. Hey, Jake. Watch this girl in the coach. All right, you people, get going. Come on, move, move, all of you. Get along there. Make it quick there. Come on, lady. Keep moving. Make it fast up in front there. All right, all of you, get in there. Get in quick. Come on, come on, right over here. Now what are you going to do with this? Welcome to the West. Del Reposo greets you. That'll do, Coachman. We've been welcomed enough. No offense, madam. Just Del Reposo's novel way of introducing you to the wild and woolly West. Jarvis! <laughs> 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 you fooled us completely. <laughs> I suspected it was some kind of a joke. Where's Pamela? She still thinks it's on the level. She wouldn't get out of the coach. Well, I don't blame her. Well, I don't know what you're going to do, young man. If she says she won't get out, she won't get out. Do you mind if I drive her in, then? It's perfectly safe. We do it all the time. We'll be in right after you. I think the whole thing's decidedly stupid. I don't see any harm in it. Go ahead. Thank you. Come on, coachman. Hey, I'm going to scare some of the stubbornness out of that girl. I know what's the matter with you. You're stage struck. Get along there, you. Get in there. I'll take care of those other people, Jake. Now you get up there on that seat and start driving. You make a false move, I'll thrill you. Never mind about the others. You better start worrying about yourself. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with you. Really? Well, if you don't mind the suggestion, you might straighten that silly moustache. It is silly, isn't it? There. The show's over. The others have gone ahead in the automobile. Oh, I see. Am I being honored by this personal attention? All part of my job, lady. The hotel pays me to scare people, and I scare them. Well, what a lofty ambition. Sort of Western Frankenstein. We don't get along very well, do we? Is it necessary? I'd better keep my mouth shut. <laughs> That's the first intelligent thing you've said. permission to speak. Hey, coachman! Go up there.
on being funny, don't you? I'll carry you. Hadley J. Yes, sir. What's the J for? James? Hello, Al. I'll see you outside. I'm sorry, Mr. Thorne. There's nothing here. Thank you. Yes, sir. He's to be put in his place. And before I leave here, I'll do it. He has the cheek to stand there and laugh at me. Well, I think I'd have laughed myself, too. <laughs> now, what are you doing here, Doyle? I get a swell deal on. Yeah. Gonna rob some baby's bank? Nick's on the wise cracks. I'm working on something that's gonna put me on easy street. But I need a little assistance. Yeah? Well, don't count on me for any. I can't afford to get mixed up in any petty larceny rackets. Well, I'm up against it. I need dough to put over this proposition. Listen, there's two cowboys here. They own a red-hot claim. I had an expert sneak down and send me a report on it. And boy, I could raise plenty of dough on that report alone. A very interesting fairy tale. Fairy tale nothing. This is the real thing. They don't know what they got. But I figure if I shake a few grand under their noses, they'll snatch at it. 
Here's one of the partners now. Oh, boy. Look at the trips that those people have made. Gee, I'd be a truck myself to go to some of those countries. Well, that was certainly a swell finish to our last show, wasn't it? That's Walker. Oh, the wise guy that plays a fan, huh? I don't think I'm interested. But Al! And don't call me Al. Say, I think we can do something with that, Mr. Doyle. He's awfully interested in our claim. Hmm. Well, forget him. He's just a tin horn promoter who wants to chisel in. Maybe. Yeah. If we can sell out to him and save us a lot of work, and I hate to pass up a good chance. <laughs> well, suppose you pack the rest of my duds while I change clothes. Oh, well, let me forget. My coat. The princess has it. But it doesn't make sense, Pamela. What doesn't? Asking the manager to detail that cowboy as our guide tomorrow. If he was rude to Dill Manor, I should think you'd hate him. He's not important enough to hate, but I do resent his daring to laugh at me. You got my money, Mr. Nolan? I'll take for Simmons, too. I haven't made your time up yet, Bob. We should reconsider. Mm -mm. I'll let you take that English party out tomorrow. No, thanks. <laughs> I got enough of that girl coming in today. Oh, I'll be back in a minute. I've got to get my coat. Gosh, I, I wish we could keep Bob here. Come in. Pardon me. I'd like to get my coat. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to apologize, Mr. Walker. I realize now that those horses were running away. I'm afraid I wasn't a very good sport. Am I forgiven? There's nothing to forgive, Miss Barclay. I really ought to apologize for laughing at you. But when you hobble in wearing this coat and with one slipper, well, it was the funniest thing I've seen in years. I, <laughs> I understand you're a guide. I am. Would you like to act as our guide while we're here? I'm sorry, I can't. My partner and I are leaving today. We have some work of our own to attend to. Oh, another day wouldn't make any difference, would it? Oh, uh, I don't know, but when you make up your mind to do a thing, uh, you really don't like to change it. Oh, well, I'm sorry. After the way you manage things today, I'd rather look forward to you being with us. I don't like to disappoint you, Miss Barclay. Well, that's all right. We can get someone else. I might stay one more oh, day. Don't bother. Just ask the manager to send a guide to us. Anyone will do. Very well. be your own boss for a while, eh? Yes, I'm sick and tired of being a dude cowboy and making personally conducted tours. I don't blame you for ducking that English party. The little I saw on Miss Barclay, she's no bargain. There she goes now. Look at her strut. She said it looks like a million. Yeah, but a terribly swelled head. Oh, she's all right. Just too much money, that's all. She needs someone to slap a bridle on her. You couldn't tame her like a horse. Why not? Just a question of handling. Why, in two days, I'd have a reading right out of my hand. Oh, get away with that stuff. I'll bet you five bucks in two days she wouldn't even be talking to you. <laughs> if I was staying on, I'd take you up. I'll uh, give you two to one. At that, you've got to admit, she certainly oozes class. Today's Wednesday. Ten bucks to fire that by Saturday she won't even put in a call for you. Do you mean that? Yeah. Ten to five? Yeah. It's a bet. Shake on it. Say, tell Mr. Nolan to hold up that money until Saturday. Will uh, Persimmons with you? Oh, sure. Give me some of these new travel folders. I'll send Persimmon on another cruise. Oh, sure. Cocktails? I don't mind. Let's go to the bar. Do you call? Yeah. But it'll cost you ten bucks.
Hey, Persimmon. I want to talk to you. Okay. Yeah. We sell it's got to be for cash and a big slice of that. How big? Mm. Some number with a lot of those goose eggs behind it? Name a figure. How many? Oh, about... Uh, what? 10,000. That's a lot of money. But I'll have it in a few days. That's all settled, is it? <laughs> you sure it'll be all right with your partner? Oh, sure, if it's cash. But it's got to be all cash. Oh, boy, and then will I travel. A trip to Egypt has sure got me. Kind of breathtaking, isn't it? Beautiful. Just like a painting. They call that point Lamentation Point. Why did they ever give it such a depressing name? Oh, it's from an old legend. I don't know it very well myself. About an Indian who was humiliated because he lost his horse. He was ashamed to go back to his tribe. Ridiculous, I'd say. You don't know your West, Miss Barclay. Or an Indian, or a cowboy, to lose his horse one of the worst things that can happen to it. Those flowers are lovely. What are they? Oh, those? Uh, blue lupin. I'll get you some. Pardon me. We'll have to ride double then. Oh, no, we won't. It's your horse that's gone, not mine. But how am I going to get back? You can walk, fly, or run backwards, as far as I'm concerned. I prefer this way. Come on. I'd rather walk than ride with you. Great exercise. On a rattlesnake after dark. I don't like her off alone with that cowboy. Oh, don't worry. She hates him. Well, then why is she off riding with him? Well, that's Pamela. Oh. I wonder why your horse ran away. They'll always run if you hit them with a quirt. That was childish of me, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm really ashamed of myself. Will you forgive me? That's what you said yesterday. Mm, don't be so vindictive. It's silly of us to be carrying on a sort of cue, don't you think? It does seem like a waste of good energy. Exactly. From now on, I'm going to put all that energy into making a good impression on you. Well, you've made a pretty good dent already. You can pay a compliment, can't you? <laughs>
trains. I'll get them. See how you like the exercise. hired as a guide. These other little pleasantries are not included in your wages. Oh, I always throw those in for good measure. You see, I'm just a boy scout at heart. Mike! Good afternoon. Oh, boy, what spirit. We're gonna get along great. Will you take 20,000? And she's got such gorgeous blue eyes. I wouldn't care if her eyes were fried in butter. Will you take 20,000? Oh. Huh? For what? For the mine. Who offered 20,000? Nobody. But then, suppose they should. Suppose you get some sense. Nobody's gonna offer that much money. Oh, Mr. Nolan, I'd like to retain Mr. Walker as our guide for the rest of our stay here. How long will that be, Miss Barclay? Oh, that all depends. I'll try and arrange it. Thank you very much. Corral, please. I've stopped in cowboys. Oh, hello, Mr. Nolan. You bet I will. Yes, sir. Will you take 20,000? For what? The mine! Oh, oh, look, Persimmon, you take charge of the mine. I'm taking charge of Miss Barclay. By this time, you must be made of asbestos. You know what that letter said. That guy's in the sweet spot if he finds out what he's got. Think what he could do if he had any real money. Now, I can pick that property up for 20 grand. How about it? I thought you said 10. Now, Walker wouldn't let it go for that. And 10 in cash and the rest, maybe. You haven't got the dough borrowed from the old lady. We can split close to 100 grand. Sounds all right. It is all right. Think what that punk cowboy could do if he had a bank loan. I'll take you out to the mine in the morning. You can look it over yourself. Yeah. A little horseback ride might do me some good. Yeah. Wait a minute. How 
was just thinking. I hope our being out there doesn't make him think we're too interested. He might check up the price again. Yeah. That old guy was pretty enthusiastic, wasn't he? He's kind of excited, too. Say, that's why he wanted us to tell Walker to hustle out there. He struck something. We gotta get busy, Al. Yeah. See what I can... Seven. Oh, uh, have a cigar? Just one? <laughs> you know, uh, without having a look at that mine of yours, looks like a pretty good piece of property. Are you interested in mines, Mr. Thornton? I'm interested in anything where I can make any money. Hey, what are you planning to do with that claim? Well, I turned down an offer of $10,000 for it, and... Now I'm considering 20. Yes, I know. From Doyle. I don't want to disappoint you, but he hasn't any money. He tried to sell it to me for 25,000. 25? Yes. I said to myself, if I'm going to pay $25,000 for that mine, I'm going to pay it to you. Boy, you're kidding, Mr. Thornton. Would you really pay $25,000 cash? Sure I would. Of course, it's a gamble. But I'd be willing to take a chance, provided that you don't say anything about it to Doyle. Oh. I don't like to discuss my business deals with anybody. Say, I won't even tell Bob. And will he be surprised when he sees that dough? Is it a deal? I'll have the papers drawn up right away. <sighs> and I'll sit down and lay me out a cruise around the world. <laughs> Hey, how do they put a saddle on them camels? Thanks. I'm sorry, Hadley, but I couldn't possibly lend you that much money at present. If we could make a handsome profit. <laughs> Only need it for a couple of days. And I'll guarantee you that you could double your money on the transaction. Remember that little copper deal on the coast? That's true. It was profitable, wasn't it? But it's quite a sum. Of course, if we were in England, I suppose I could raise the money. Yes, sir. Say, uh, what's that story you told Doyle about a bet you made with Walker? Oh, oh that? Well, well, that wouldn't be funny to you, Mr. Thornton, unless you knew Bob. Just a little joke we had within regard to Miss Barclay, that's all. See that they break the horse, really. Mm -hmm. So it really doesn't matter. Does it? I don't know. Looking for me, Aunt Henry? Yes. I'd like to talk with you. If Mr. Walker doesn't mind. Certainly not. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Well, Pamela. You're carrying things a bit too far with that cow person. Hadley is curious. I can't see anything wrong with it. Well, everybody around the hotel is talking about you. We've been here two weeks now, and I think that's long enough. But the air is so refreshing, Aunt Henry. Rubbish. I'm just looking for an excuse to carry on this outrageous flirtation. How do you know it's only just a uh, flirtation? Well, I certainly hope it is. I don't know what's come over you. Your whole viewpoint has changed. I'm Henry. Yes? Maybe it's just as well. Now don't misunderstand me. And don't think I'm a star. I'm just giving you a friendly tip. Was this your own idea, Mr. Thornton? No, it's Mrs. Barclay's. Frankly, she's worried. You know, you and Pamela have been seeing quite a good deal of each other these last two weeks. Let's talk about the hotel. You know how people gossip. Personally, I think you've got too much sense to do it. Well, to... Step out of my character? Well, yes. After all, there is quite a difference, isn't there? Luxury and refinement. 
She's used to having anything she wants, regardless of cost. A bill here will give you a small idea of that. Figures don't lie. No, but uh, liars do figure. You're not kidding me, Mr. Corker. Right. I see I've wasted some good advice. Once a cowboy, always a cowboy, eh? Yes, and once a heel, always a heel. Now don't get too funny or I'll step on your nose. You do, and I'll walk the whole length of yours. Forty. It's eight hours late. <laughs> Can you imagine that? We gotta do our acting in the moonlight. Well, I'm not going. Take Jake. What's the matter with you? Oh, a guy just told me I was a cowboy. Well, ain't you? Yeah. I forgot it for a while. Heat up! Where are you going? Oh, nowhere in particular. Just look around. Why is there benefit? Just thinking. Do it out loud. I'd better not. It might be dangerous. <laughs> You're not usually so, Jimmy. Hmm. Maybe I'm just beginning to get a little sense. We had a glorious time these past two weeks. Haven't we, Bob? Marvelous. You thought I was pretty fresh that first day, didn't you? Oh, worse than that. However, my opinion of you has considerably improved since then. It's a glorious night, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, kind of pretty. you tonight? Nothing. Why? Don't you like being here with me? Why, sure, Pamela. Only... Only what? Oh, nothing. I... Calling Miss Barkley. Calling Miss Barkley. They're paging you. Oh, Danny Aunt Henry. She's probably worrying again. I think you'd better go. Well, if you feel that way about it, perhaps I had. Hi, Bob. Hello, Huey. What's up? Ben asked me to stop on the way in and tell you boys to hurry out the mine. Anything wrong? What's the matter? Didn't say. The guy's snooping around out there trying to get a lot of information out of Ben. I want you to hurry right out. And no stalling. I, uh, I didn't mean any disrespect, Mrs. Barclay. Don't you call it disrespectful to compare my niece to a horse? Oh, Auntie, where's your sense of humor? Well, there wasn't anything personal, Miss Barclay. About you, I mean. We, uh... He just wanted to keep Bob from quitting, and, well, you were the latest arrival. I think it's very amusing. I suppose he's a great favorite with all the girls that come here. Quite the gay cavalier. Oh, sure, only one's just the same as another. A Bob, uh, he's used to having them run after him. I mean, well, it, it just doesn't mean anything to him, you know. So you played on his vanity. Is that the idea? Oh, yes, yes, that's it. I, uh, I knew that he was in need of some money. You see, he's wanting to go out and work his claim, so... Well, I... I guess he just figured it was an easy way to pick up ten dollars. In other words, his only reason for remaining was to win the wager he made with you. Well... Well, yes, yes, that's all. You see, he was all packed and ready to leave. I, I see. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. 
Thank you. I, uh, I hope you're not offended, Miss Barclay. You see, well, Mr. Thornton promised he, he wouldn't say anything about it. It was too good to keep. We had quite a laugh over it. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, I hope you don't find the air here so refreshing after that. I've made a fool of myself. I had to come a long way to do it, too. Now I understand why he acted as he did tonight. I almost threw myself at him. I only wanted us to win ten dollars. I think you're right. We have been. Isn't that blast ever going to go off? She'll go in a minute. Hope you're right about that ledge. I'll stake my reputation on it. That's why I sent for you. Those fellas were down here. I knew you had some kind of a deal on. I didn't want you to sell out till you saw what was here. Look at that. What did I tell you? Uh-huh, uh-huh. The deeper you go, the richer it gets. Yeah? I gotta sit down. Well, take it easy now, Ben. How do you think, huh? Bob, that's the richest strike since Tonopah. Do you mean that? Million? This mine's worth millions. Ah! Woo! Fine! Ah! That's the more I stand for. Ah! Woo! 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 Come on, Ben! Let's get back to El Reposo! She flew east. She left this note here for you. Gee, Bob, I sure am glad to hear about all your good luck. And listen, if you have any chance at all, why, let me off, will you? That's Keep good driving as well. I knew you'd do it. I knew you'd do it. Bob, Hey, Walker. <laughs> hey, what are you going to do about this? Let's go up to my room and have a talk. No, not now, Mr. Doyle. Oh, now, listen. Give me a break. I waste a lot of time with you fellas, you know. If any oh, oh. You're in a tough spot. The Simmons has messed this thing all up. The Simmons? He agreed to sell out to Thornton for $25,000. To Thornton? Yes. Thornton took him to London with him. The Simmons thought he had a great deal. Brother, you can kiss that mine goodbye. I can't sell that mine without my signature. Don't kid yourself, buddy. Under the law, you're bound by anything your partner agrees to. That's right, Bob. What he'll do to that partner of yours is nobody's business. Why, he's one of the slickest confidence men, not only in this country, but in the whole world. You mean he's a crook? Crook? He's all the crooks you ever heard about. If he's offered 25,000, that means he figures on paying about 10. Oh, why, the mine is worth millions. And I'll tell you something else. If you think anything of the girl, you better hot foot it after that guy and break that thing up. He's only after her dough. How do you know? How do I know? Why, he told me. Did he leave any forwarding address? The doctors did. Can I have some money, Mr. Nolan? Anything you want, Bob. What are you going to do? All I want to do is get my hands on that fellow Thornton.
Lee Hadley. That's good news. I've better news than that. The bank has disposed of some of my securities. They're sending the money out by special messenger. Should be here shortly. Oh, that's fine. I'd like to get everything settled this afternoon. Now, how's Pamela? Pamela is very upset about this cablegram from uh, uh, Mr. Doyle. Doyle? This is only a scheme of Bob Walker's. Then everything is quite all right. Why, of course it is. Tell Miss Pamela tea is ready. Whoopee, sir! Do. Is uh, Miss Barclay in? Miss Barclay is at her country home, sir. This house is closed for the season. Uh, I'm from America. I'm very anxious to get in touch with Mr. Hadley Thorpe. Do you know him? Know him? <laughs> Indeed I do, sir. Mr. Thornton is possibly at the country estate, too, sir. <laughs> I'm just a business acquaintance. Telephone from here, sir. Very kind, thank you. Not putting you out at all. No, no, I can't. Nonsense, Hadley. You can't make me believe that. You must be getting a little the best of it, or you wouldn't be so anxious to go through with it. My dear Pamela, I have assured you that everything is perfectly legitimate. Now, Persimmon knows what the mine is worth, and he has full authority to sell. Telephone, Mr. Thornton. Well, who is it? The gentleman didn't say. I have to tell you it's important. Hello? Hello? Thornton? Yes. Who is this? This is Bob Walker. Where's Persimmon? Well, I don't know. Uh, he, he must be in London somewhere. Now, don't lie, Thornton, and don't buy that mine until you see me. I have an idea you held out those cables I sent to him. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'll make it good and plain. I'm on my way now, and if you try to pull any fast ones, I'll break you in two. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, how far is it to this Barclay place? It's a gadget, sir. Briarwood Manor. About 25 miles, sir. Thank you, very kind. If he still wants to carry out this business, that's his own affair. But I'm going to make sure that he understands. I believe you're still thinking of that cowboy. I'm afraid I'll have to run along. I'm taking Persimmon to the lodge this afternoon. When the money comes, would you mind sending it there instead of to the inn? Certainly not. I'll have Benson take it over. You're determined to go through with this transaction. Is that it, Hadley? Naturally, I've gone this far. And you're sure that Persimmon understands everything? My dear Pamela, will you please leave this to me? Will you excuse me, please?
a young lady should inquire either for Mr. Persimmon Bates or for myself. Send her up to my room. Yes, Mr. Thornton. Is that it? Yes, sir. Is everything clear? Clear is clear. And here's the key. <coughs> everything set, Mr. Simmon. In a little while, you'll be a rich man. Yeah. Have you got the contract? How do you like the California top? Strike me pink. Makes you look ten years younger, mate. Want, sir? Yes, Mr. Thornton. Why, Mr. Thornton just left, sir. You'll find him at the Dog's Head Inn about three miles from here. Thank you very much. Dog's Head Inn, driver. Please. He's staying here with Mr. Thornton. You'll find him up in 22. <coughs> Is Mr. Bates here, please? Yes, miss. Come right in. They've just stepped out for a moment. Take a seat, they'll be right back. I want to see Mr. Thornton. He and the American gentleman have gone up to London for the day, sir. Having lunch at Simpson's. London? I just came from there. Taxi! 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 What? Say, where do you get a taxi around here? You don't. Well, how do I get back to London? How did you get down here? Mrs. Barclay told me to give you this. Well, thank you. You'll find everything comfortable here. I like the fire. Take a chill off. Anything else, sir? No, that'll be all then. Well, here we are. Two thousand pounds. Two thousand pounds? You weigh your money over here? How much is that in dollars? Ten thousand. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Thornton. You told me I was to get 25000 So you will. And the rest of the money is on the way over. It'll be here before we're ready to leave. In the meantime, uh, sit down and we'll settle everything. You're sure the rest of that money's coming? Sure. Ah! Bob's sure going to be tickled when he finds out what I've done. Yes. Uh, yep. Here goes. Your full legal name. Persimmon. 
Is that your real name? Well, that's what everybody calls me. What were you christened? What did they call you when you were born? Baby. What name did you sign when you rented the claim? Willie. Willie Bates. Well, sign that. You were here. Don't sign anything, Persimmon. Stay right there. It's already signed. Hey, Bob, cut it out. What are you trying to do? Let him alone. Let him alone. He'll ruin everything. Stop. Let me go. Let me go. Stay right here. Oh, oh look what Bob's doing to Mr. Thornton. I don't want Mr. Thornton to try to kill you. Say, I don't know. Trying to do to me, trying to give me $25,000. The bomb's going to clear it. Bob! Look at you, what he does. Say, what's the matter with you? Are you all crazy? Bob! Bob, the paper! The paper! <laughs> it's burning! Oh, 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 Bob, you're burning up $25,000! You keep out of this. There goes my trip to Egypt. A mine is worth millions. I cabled you that three times. Ask your friend. I get it. I'll see you outside. Bet you ten dollars I'm going to marry you. I wouldn't give you two to one on that. The horse kicked me. 